guys welcome back to fix lab and welcome to the 30 days of flutter from basic to high morale so in this series we are going to be working through how to actually uh, build flutter applications but we're going to be taking it from the basics to a stage where you'll be happy that you actually have learned a lot so let's quickly get into that we're going to be focusing today on flutter installations and other nitty-gritty that we actually need to get ready before we can actually start building on flutter so first of all on this episode uh, we're going to be just tackling two difficult parts that every flutter developer especially if you're a starter will always face and that is installation of tools especially the flutter and setting it up for your machine depending on the machine you're actually building up so focusing today we're going to be doing our installation on the mac so if you're using windows or you're using linux you're going to find the link on the description on how to actually install that on those other machines but right now i'm going to be doing that on the mac so let's quickly get into that the first thing we need to do now is to go to the flutter developer website which is flutter.dev so if you head to flutter.dev the link is linked uh, on the description so you find flutter.dev on the description so once you head to flutter.dev what we need to do is to click on the docs there's if you look on top of it you're going to find docs docs is located at the top right corner of the website if you look at what i'm trying to point out now if you see docs then the next thing you need to do is to click on install flutter so when we click on install flutter it's going to present us with other options so we have like about four platforms that we can actually install flutter on uh, number one is windows the second one is mac and then we have linux and chrome OS. but today we are going to be taking the second option which is the mac right so on that page if you choose the Mac OS, you will see that we have some requirement, like system requirement, right? So the system requirement is what we need to have before we should be able to install this and without issues, right? The operating system is going to be Mac OS, definitely, right? And we need about 2.8 gigabytes of space to be able to install that. And have in mind that this particular space size is not the space size that you need for everything, like your IDs or, you know, like if you're, if you're planning to use Android Studio, Xcode and Visual Studio Code, this space is not just enough for that. So this is strictly for Flutter SDK itself. So that being said, we need to also install the tools. So the tools that we also need to install could be other developer tools that actually comes along with Flutter. So we're going to do that now. And then the next thing we're going to be doing is to install Xcode, right? Xcode is if you are targeting to actually run your app on the iPhone, you need Xcode to be able to do that. And meanwhile, because we're already running on the Mac, it's going to be easy for us. We already have the machine that enables that to work because running Xcode on Windows, the last time I checked, I'm not sure how easy or how if possible at all on Windows. So uh, having that, uh, having said that, we're going to continue now. So uh, if you download next code, you see that next code comes with Git. So if you're st installing next code, you don't need to install Git differently. But if you already have Git in your system, then there's no issues, right? Then after that, there's an important thing to note. If you are running M1 uh, computer, M1 Mac, then definitely you don't need, uh, there's something you need to install first before you should be able to continue. And that is this particular command on the screen. So if you check out, we have this command sudo software update dash dash install dash rosetta dash dash agree to license, right? So you need to run that in the terminal because I'm not running on, on Mac OS M1, so I don't need to run this command as well. But if you're not running on that, then there's no issues. But if you're running on M1, then you need to run that particular command before you should continue, right? That's, that's for M1. All right, let's go ahead. So after that, uh, you can see that what we have right now below getting the Flutter SDK. We have two variants so we have the one for mac os intel and we have the one mac os apple silicon so they're using different architectures this one is arm64 for apple silicon and then we have the mac the normal mac os 3.3 uh, right now we have version 3.3 last time i installed mine i should have like 2.05 but i think i've upgraded to 3.05 by now uh, and you can see that the version we have right as a part of this recording is 3.3 so it's way more ahead than i have but that's simple even if you have older version you can always do a uh, flutter upgrade and then it should be on the latest fashion then uh once also point out that we can see that we have stable attached to the name what it means is because flutter have two variants most of the time we have the stable and we have the uh, beta so the beta is where uh, the new features are being tested if you're already a bad ass uh, flutter developer then you can always switch to that particular branch to check out new features or if you don't want to get into issues then you can stay on the stable channel to do everything you need to do you still be able to do all amazing things that flutter have in the stable channel right so that being said let's go ahead and click and download 
for this particular machine so for me i'm going to go ahead and proceed because i already have that downloaded so you could just click on this and when you click on that the download is going to pop up like you see and uh, but because i already have that i'm not going to download that so just go ahead and download and then we're going to continue so i will assume you already downloaded for your machine if you are on the mac m1 then you should download the one by the right if you're on the intel then you should download the one by the left and that's done there's two things that we need to do to continue so we need to be able to actually set up this very sdk and how do we do that we need to unzip the file that we're actually downloaded so that's the next thing in this in the flow but there are still something that i want to just show you easy organization of your files and codes i think for me what i did is to put my file in a location so i, I normally go to my documents i have a folder called dev tools where i put everything that has to do with development tools so you can do that as well if you like or if you have a place where you normally keep your developer tools then you can do that the idea is that you should be able to find that because that's the next thing we're going to be doing we're going to be able to go and find where this developer tool is and be able to use that to connect our integrations with the developer environment that we're going to use which is our id right so for me i have mine located at documents and inside document i have dev tools you can keep it anywhere you want and then let's go to the next stage so the next thing we need to do is to buy in a download folder so unless you have set your download folder to a different destination so wherever destination you have it then you could go and copy it and then paste it in your workspace where you want to uh, find this thing when you're going to use it so mine is pasted on dev tools and we're going to do the unzipping in the dev tools dev tools folder right so now there are two strategies you can use to actually uh, unzip this file the easiest one is using the ui by just right clicking on top of the file and then open it with archive utility archive utility comes with every macbook computers so you wouldn't need to but if you have other zip utility files then you can also use them but i think i've always tested and trusted that particular archive utility application and it has always served now if you've unzipped that way then it's fine there's another strategy you can use if you want to go the long way being the hacker guy you could also try out this method so how do you do that you're going to navigate back let's go back to the folder we pasted our file so if you navigate back to the folder then you need to right click on top of that folder called uh, dev tools and then go to services and then click on the uh, open terminal in the folder right so you're going to open a new terminal in this particular folder we are currently located inside so once you open that you already know that we have this file the downloaded file inside our location so now let's do something more kind of easy to help us make this faster go ahead and rename that downloaded file to flutter3.3.zip uh, this is just for us to be able to pick up the name so fast because we normally when you download you're going to have something like flutter underscore mac os underscore three dot three dot zero dash stable dot zip so i find that very long so just rename it to flutter three point three dot zip and that's okay and then you can go ahead since you're already in this particular directory so what we did by opening uh terminal in this folder is just like saying cd into that particular folder that you want to actually use and if you've done that already then you need to call this command up by typing this command on the terminal on zip dash flutter 3.3.zip so once you do that then it's going to trigger process of unzipping these files so once you actually trigger that file that very um, unzipping process then you can sit back and wait until it finishes so we're going to continue once we're done unzipping i'm going to continue the next phase of this very installation process so i'll see you soon once you're done okay so if your unzipping has finished now if you've finished then let's continue to the next phase the next phase is where we're going to actually uh set the path variable the path variable is one of the most important part of this flow so how do we do that uh, we need to export the path the path is the location of this particular download that we just made or the particular unzipping like i told you you actually unzipped in a particular folder that you preferred i did my on a particular folder i called dev tools the dev tools has the flutter folder that we actually just unzip now and inside that particular flutter folder there's another folder called b all right so what we're going to do is that we're going to type this command in our terminal export space path equals to in quotes dollar sign path colon then present working directory forward slash blog uh, flutter forward slash b then you close quote all right so what we're trying to tell our command prompt here is to actually set the path to that is the location of this particular uh, flutter sdk uh, binary file that we want to this time we want to actually run flutter we need to be able to find the location so if you type this in the terminal it's going to set this current window to actually uh, be able to find flutter each time you run a flutter command like flutter create or flutter doctor you should be able to execute that command all right but the only short uh, shortcoming of this particular approach is that once you close this terminal window you are not going to be able to execute this uh, flutter commands again so you will have to do the same thing again so but uh, we're going to do the permanent one which i i'm going to show you how to do that and once you've done that then you have 
everything set up. So let's say we have different type of terminals, right? So we have different type of types of terminals. So if you're running something like Bash or you're running something like Z Shell, you know, there's just multiple different versions of that. So we are I'm assuming that you're actually using Bash. If you're using Z Shell, it's still fine. So uh, we're going to navigate to our home directory. Our home directory is when you click on the finder and when the finder is open, you should be able to go to your name. The name is the name of the computer. As for my own case, you can see I have Champ as the name. So Champ, it has this icon, the home, like just like a building or something, the home icon. So inside that place, then you need to type a particular command. The command is what I showed here is a combination of keys like a shortcut. So you press command shift dot or command shift full stop while on that particular champ folder or your own names folder, right? So once you type that, you can see that some folders and files that has dots actually shows up, right? So it's actually hidden folders and files. That command is actually what toggles this view to come out. So once you click on that, it shows this particular files and folders. So we are interested on the particular file that actually boosts all our path. So for my own case, I'm going to edit a particular file that is called the bash profile. So in your case, if you're using a Z shell, you might need to edit a different one called a Z that is SHROC. But if you are running bash, you should in edit this particular file bash profile or bash roc all right and if you don't happen to find these files then you can actually create them just create a new file with a dot bash profile on that or that's bash underscore profile in your home directory right so once you've done that then you open that file so if i open this my own bash profile with text edit i recommend you use text edit if i open that you can see uh, i have plenty of uh, path already set but you can see when i'm interested on the second one the second one has this export path equals to tilde i am having today because i want to i wanted to be able to find the preceding uh location like maybe users and uh, every other part that actually uses document and all of that and then document is where my file my particular dev tools is located so if i go to my document you can see documents then i have dev tools located somewhere here right so document dev tools is where i'm pointing it document dev tools then flutter is this particular folder right now and then inside the flutter then there's this bin folder that hosts the binary so this binary folder with this i have been able to point flutter i've been able to set the path telling me that this is where my executable is which is the flutter sdk right here all right so if you've done that then you can make sure you actually point it exactly to where your flutter sdk is located i don't know where you actually stored yours so if, you're, if yours is still in a download i don't know it's fine anywhere you store it that you feel comfortable if it's in your workspace make sure you are pointing to the right direct, uh, directory and then you can click on save and close this particular batch profile file and once you've done that then you are ready to test remember if you are using a different bash then you should also test that and how do you find the kind of shell that you are using if you're using a different shell you can find that by typing on the terminal just like this let's do echo shell on the terminal so if you type echo shell on the, file, on the terminal you can see that it's going to show up the one you have the one you are using uh, that will enable you to know the particular file in that hidden folders that you're going to edit so for me i edited the bash profile or bash rc any of this with surf so but if you're using the z shell you can also edit it out there uh, you can edit the z shell in home directory and once you've done that then it's okay you are good to go now if you've done that perfectly well like i did and then you don't have any errors then you can go ahead and close the terminal close the terminal and then open it again so once you open it again type anywhere in the command prompt you don't need to be in a specific folder now just type flutter doctor and once you're able to type flutter doctor and the command runs then you are free now to grab if i'm looking for coffee anything and then because you've actually done the most stressful part of setting up as a flutter developer right uh, the next thing we're going to be doing in the next episode is going to be the ide setup which is going to be relatively easier since we've done the download and installations and we've been able to set the path variable and make sure that actually flutter is running in our machine the next thing we're going to be doing in the next episode is actually trying to set up our ids to connect them so that when we start coding our id should be able to interact with the flutter sdk and that sdk to make everything work as we want and in that particular episode we're going to be you know installing other tools that makes our coding experience very easy and fast so i'm going to see you in the next episode thank you